The West Indies kicked off their preparations for the upcoming test series against England in a huge way today where they started their inter-squad warm-up match. Of course, Brathwaite's 11 batting first on day one um, and, and really good to see standout performances from two batsmen in particular that have been under a lot of scrutiny, Shea Hope and Craig Brathwaite. Brathwaite getting 84 and Shea Hope getting 83. But what I'm impressed with is the time that they were able to spend at the crease. Uh, Brathwaite able to spend 162 deliveries, where Hope uh, was able to spend uh, over 120 deliveries. So really encouraging to see those two guys. We know how well they did at Headingley in 2017. And we know both of them are very experienced in terms of playing cricket in England. So it's something that I'm very impressed with. Um, seeing these two guys do well, but really the day was dominated by the bowlers of Holders 11 uh, Azari Joseph bowling extremely well to pick up four wickets as well as Shannon Gabriel Who is someone that we're, we were not sure if he would be ready for the first test. He's listed in the reserves um, He was you know He got three wickets as well and bowled with some serious aggression and you know It's very encouraging to see him as well because I think with the experience that he bites um, Playing in a place like England um, against the batting and the caliber of batting that they, they have um, and they will pose against the West Indies, you need someone like a Shannon Gabriel to lead that bowling attack with the likes of Kemal Roach. So Roach also did bowl well. He was only able to pick up one wicket. But for me, the two standout names there were Shannon Gabriel and Alzari Joseph. Something which also stood out to me was seeing Kyle Mayer's bowl as well. Someone who was recovering from injury in the last first class season, was only able to bowl in the last two matches. And to see him bowl eight overs, I think, was very encouraging um, because we know he can be a valuable asset with the bat and if he can do something with the ball as well for the future of the test series it could be huge for the balance of the western east side so all in all a balanced first day um, in terms of good cricket for the west indies but definitely um, conditions suiting the bowlers and we saw really a capitulation which is probably the only worrying point if you're a west indian fan because at one point the west indies 234 uh, for the loss of four wickets to then see them capitulate to 275, um, losing six wickets for 39 runs. It was not, uh, you know, the best things to see ahead of a tour, but there's still another practice match. There's probably going to be another innings for these guys to bat. And of course, we have Holders 11 to come out and bat tomorrow as well. So we're hoping for better signs in terms of the batting because that to me may be the biggest concern going into this series. Assistant coach of the West Indies, Roddy Eswick, faced the press today. Let's hear what he thought on the game. Yeah. Today, first, before I get to the bowlers, I know that's your main focus, Roddy, but, um, you know, the batting, Craig Braffitt, Shea Hope, two guys that a lot of people would say, a lot of critics around the world would say, you know, these guys are finished from test cricket, pulling out scores uh, over 80. How impressed were you and was the whole team by, you know, seeing these guys perform and do well? Well, firstly, if, if they're going to be finished from Test Cricket at age 26 and 27, we in the West Indies have to, to be really worried. They're now coming into their peak. So I'm not really surprised that they've, they've, they've had scores of 84 and 83. Obviously, they've been working, they've been working very hard. You remember on the last tour to England in 2017, Craig got 100 and a 97, and Shea got back-to-back -back hundreds at, at least. So they, they, they're quite confident, um, confident where the game game is that at the moment so it's good to see them go out and get some match practice we've they, they, they've been off cricket for two months so it was good to see everybody get home in the park and um, for us this, the sun shone here in, in 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 manchester so it was a good day all around a day dominated by the fast bowlers shannon gabriel uh, a lot of questions have been asked about his fitness roddy but he showed today you know with the aggression that he bowled with um that he's obviously ready for the task and you also had someone like a Preston McSween who's come through um, the system in, in the reserves and also done very well. In the fast bowling department, how impressed were you with what you saw today? I was happy with the all-round game. Um, obviously, Shanna was, it was good to see him back. And anybody that saw Shanna run the, um, the 2K um, run we had before wouldn't be worried about Shannon's fitness. Um, obviously, he needed some miles in his neck, legs from a bowling point of view. And he, he came up today, he got some overs in, he got three wickets for 32 runs. So he's done well. But at the end of the day, we're trying to peak for July 8th. You know, every day we, 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 we will continue to build, build blocks, continue to try to get better and continue to be, to be ready come the 8th of July. Craig Brassett's level about 199 for three. 
then we saw the a sort of collapse uh, to 275 all out. Um, of course, I'm sure you must be happy with the way that your bull has responded, but um, a bit disappointed with the batsmen and the, and the way that they collapsed. Well, obviously, you've, you've got to give credit to somebody like Azari Joseph, who came back after T and had a tremendous spell, ending up with four for 60. So, you, you know, for, for me, it was a good day's cricket. It, um, the, bat, the, the bat dominated for the first two sessions and the bowlers came, came into their own at the end of the, uh, end of the day. And it was heartening to see the bowlers still running in hard at 5.30. So that, that's a good sign for us. Um, could I just ask you about uh, the seamers again, a bit more specifically? How did they all look? How have they reacted to, I guess, their first serious bowl for several months? Um, and I noticed there are a few no balls from Kimar. Is that just the sort of thing that's going to happen after you've had a long layoff? Well, obviously, you're trying to get your, your rhythm back. If you're off for two months from doing anything, it takes a, a while to get back into the groove. Um, the first spell, we weren't as threatening as I would like. We were a bit wide of our stump. But as the day went, went, went along, we got, we got a lot better. And like I said, it was heartening to see see them coming back at 5.30 and then putting in good spells. And Kima got 12 overs on his belt today. And I thought he, he came back after lunch and had a, a, a really good spell at Craig Braffitt. So, you know, we're beginning to get there. It will take time. You know, the, the, when you haven't played cricket for that, that length of time, fast bowling is very, very hard because it's all about rhythm, all about getting some kind of momentum, all about getting overs under your belt. So you can, you can go in the nets and you can, you can do all the, the gym work and the running, but you actually got to get the ball in your hand and, 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 and get used to the conditions. I just want to talk about Alzari. Obviously, he took four for 60 today. And I just want to know, obviously, you focus predominantly on the bowling and just how you see where Alzari's at in his career. We sometimes forget that Alzari's only 23 years old. Um, and obviously, he had his big breakthrough at the World Cup, under-19 World Cup. Um, but he's had injury problems and the, the same would go to the sky. Like there's, there's, there's no cap on the ceiling for Alzari. What do you think about his development so far? He's, very, very, he's, he's a very, very talented individual. He, he, he understands his game. He understands his role in the team. And if you look at the, the one-day games that he's played in the last year or so, he's, be, he's been very, very good for us. So he's developing. He's 23. But he's, he's had three years of international cricket behind him now. So we, we expect great things, great things from him. And once he stays injury free and he continues to work and, and he's, got, he's got Shannon Gabriel, um, Kimar Roach, Jason Holder to pass on their experience on the field. You know, I, I'm in constant dialogue with him and, and, and we, 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 we have discussions all the time. And I think he will, be, he will improve. We've got a lot of young bowlers from that, that, that under 19 in, in the region. There's about five, five of them here that was available for that um, 2016 World Cup. So it's not just about Azari Joseph, it's about a group of very young, exciting fast bowlers.